Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. In this latest episode of Lindsay Needs an Intervention, we're going to look at another set of watercolors that I purchased. <sighs> Actually, I've had my eye on these for a while. They would go in and out of stock. I don't know when they showed up at first on Amazon, but they caught my eye and uh, I just kept looking at them and putting them in my save for later cart and I just, I broke down. I broke down and I ordered them last week. Uh, I had a gift card and um, it made the price a little more reasonable and actually it was a pretty, pretty good price. This Mission Gold set of 48 half pans has been $99 on Amazon and for 48 half pans I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I love Mission Gold paints. I have, um, they're pure pigment colors. I have uh, some of their their old pans, which were larger. This is actually a fairly small box. Um, and I was just intrigued. I knew I would like the paint, and I was just really intrigued by this new palette. I think I need to go get a um, a standard 48 half pan palette to show for reference, because I don't know, this looks a little small to me. I'll take the plastic off. And let's open her up. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. How big is this? One, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches by one, two, three, four. Not quite, uh, is it not quite nine, but not quite four, just over nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just over nine by just under four inches. Oh my gosh. How cute. I love innovative design, and that's just, that's just cute. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh. I'm a sucker. We've got, oh my gosh, it comes with a swatch sheet. I was just preparing a swatch sheet, but it comes with a swatch sheet with the information printed. Oh, I really like that. Oh, I really like that a lot. And it looks like it's good paper too. Look at that. It's got the um, light fastness information. It's got this, what series it is. So when you want to buy a replacement, you can say, okay, that series B, that's series D, that's going to be this amount, it's going to be that amount, it's got your, your little pigment key in there. Wow, this is really great. This paper feel, this paper looks like it's good too. Oh, you know, I'm very impressed. Well, let's see, we've got a little uh, kind of glassine protector so it doesn't, so the paints don't stick. They're not wrapped, so let's just take a look here. So we've got 48 colors. Our ultramarine here looks, or cobalt, whatever that is, looks a little cracked. Now, if I recall, because you can, I think you might be able to buy this palette empty. I think, I think you can take this out. I don't see, is there a brochure in here? Yes, there's a brochure. Let's take a look at this. Um, I think you can take this all apart and like rearrange it if you wanted to. It shows right here. It's all in Korean, but uh, it shows that you can lift this part up and get to the paints if you want to rearrange them. I'm not going to rearrange them because it looks like they're in the arrangement that the swatch card is, but I kind of would like to just be able to see. Maybe you have to unscrew it. Do these unscrew maybe? Oh, I don't know. How do I get those out? Oh, there we go. It just pulls, it just pulls out. It pulls out. It doesn't have a, it's just kind of, it's really, oh, I'm kind of afraid to though. I wonder, I was just looking, there's a little ridge on there. I was trying to see if there's something that's, there we go. And so, I think, how does this come out? Oh, I think it's hinged on. Oh, you know what I'd like to do though? I wouldn't mind turning this whole thing around if it will go. Ah! Okay, I'd rather have it go this way because that's the way the swatch goes. And where is... I have a feeling I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, these are gonna fly. Looks like there's little latches right there. I'm probably gonna regret this. You're good to see it though. You'll get to see what it's all about before you, oh, look at that, okay. All right, these are, this one looks like this one is stuck to the plastic little vellum piece. Mm. 
Mission Gold paints can tend to travel a bit in humid environments. I've had uh, my perfect pan set. I had some of the, uh, I've had the paints splurp out. If I try to, if I store that on its side, it, the paints will travel. So you got to make sure you store it flat. If you live in a, um, well, I live in Maine. I don't think it's terribly humid, but it's definitely not dry. Oh, look at those. That's neat. So they just, these little, these little half pans look like the Windsor Newton type. They're, they're tapered. Um, I think it says Mission Gold on the bottom, honestly. Yeah, Mission Gold. Um, and I think actually, I wonder if these are the, the W in the center kind of looks like the Weber. And I think Weber is like, is the main distributor for the United States. Look at that. That one's weird looking. Looks like it had a number, another fill. These look like they're liquid poured. Half pans, $100. I don't think that's bad for 48 half pans of this quality. But we're going to swatch them out. We're going to see if they've changed. Uh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to put them back and I'm going to see if I can put them back in the other way so that I've got the, uh, oh, yeah, the latch is just fine. I think, did it latch good? Oh, or do I have it off a little bit? I'm wondering if it's going to be messy because you've got this extra piece of plastic up over the level of the pans, but it might keep them kind of clean. I'm going to see if I can put them in like this. Uh, you know what? That's not going to work. There's a ridge on there. Ah, oh, shoot. I thought it would, but... Well, maybe it will. No, it won't. There's like a little recess for that hinge in the back. Okay, so we're just going to have to... We're just going to have to uh, leave it like that. Alright, um, then this should pop right back in. Boy, I don't know if these are meant to come out too much. Maybe they would loosen up. I guess I probably would make a habit of, of pulling these out too often. They might get too loose. Goodness gracious. Is that my side? I guess it doesn't matter. There we go. Okay. Well, I've prepared a swatch seat, a swatch sheet, and they've got this one here, which I'll keep in the uh, in the box because that's just too handy. And we're gonna go, we'll go from there. We'll go from there. I'm gonna turn it this way though because of how these are laid out. And uh, I could copy down all this information under my biggest watch sheet, but quite frankly, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I wanna set this up the best. I guess this will work. Okay, I'm turning it this way so I'm, it's gonna it's gonna match. And that way if I do wanna copy the information down, I can. Okay, so let's try doing this without adding, without pre-spraying. Um, I think the the white might be a little bit of an issue, but we'll see. This is Chinese white, PW6, which is titanium white pigment. Look out, it looks quite like cool as if it's got a blue undertone. You know what? I'm actually gonna put a little, put a little black in that one. The other ones I'm not gonna worry about because I've got the, I've got the black stripe on the, uh, on my homemade swatch there. This is awkward. I don't think I like this. I think I'll let that dry a little bit more. Yeah, let's let that dry. Oh, I kind of, you know what? That black is going to keep everything nice and tidy looking, I think. All right, we'll come back to the white for our other swatch. It's really activating really nicely. Very transparent. Lemon yellow, PW3. No surprise there. I'm gonna kind of greedy it down a little bit. Then we've got our, um, oh my gosh, quina quinanthropone yellow light. Is that right? That's what it looks like. Quin... Quinothalo yellow light. Hmm. That's an interesting name. Oh, it's pretty. It's very transparent. It almost has like a, a, a green undertone. But I don't know. It's not really greenish, but it's kind of almost like a rulian. That kind of uh, color. We'll fade it down. 
We haven't done one of these videos in a while. It's got me feeling sentimental. It's got me feeling nostalgic. When was the last one that we did like this? I'm trying to think. Probably Shinhan. And it really wasn't that long ago. I need an intervention. This will be it for a while. It's got, this has got to be, you know, and I just keep seeing new things that I want to try, and it's like, I need to, uh, I need to use what I have. Questioning my own mortality and realizing that I have probably more paints than I can use in my lifetime. Never done that. Good times. That's a pretty one. Permanent yellow deep. And, I, and you know, the ridiculous thing is, oh, besides the fact that I'm sp splashing water everywhere, the ridiculous thing is that um, I have a lot of these colors in other Mission Gold sets. So, super, super unnecessary, but then again, um, maybe it'll you know, scratch the itch for you, and then you won't feel like you need to order it. This one's yellow-orange. That's a pretty color. Does that work? Can you, does that work? Like, kind of this can sat, uh, satisfy your curiosity, so you won't feel the need to order it? Or does it just make the want monster worse? The, the brush I'm using, by the way, is a uh, Princeton Neptune. So it's not a, it's a very soft brush. And these colors are having no problem reactivating with that really soft brush either. So that's a good sign. These are, you know, I don't regret it. It's great paint. I just got to make sure I use it up before I die. You know, that's really pretty. That's a really pretty orange. Red orange. Hmm. This one is permanent red deep. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean these are rewetting so well. Ooh, look at that. The next one is Rose Matter. Oh, this looks pretty. Nice cool red. Can't wait to do a painting with these. I like that it comes with a swatch chart for the, uh, swatch chart for the box, so that's really handy. That's a fail of a gradient, not the paint's fault. Next we have burgundy red. I like that black, um, the black overlay though, because it's, it is going to keep your paint, look, your, your palette looking nice and tidy if that's important to you. This almost looks like a crimson, like a lizard crimson color. Let's see what the pigment on that one is. PR177, like a matter, like a matter lake. Next up we have quinacridone crimson light. Or, no, I'm sorry, quinacridone crimson lake. The printing is very small on this because it's got 48, 48 colors. This is available in, um, a 24 and 36, I think. So if you like this, but you want a smaller footprint, the pans appear to be like not full all the way to the top, but I just think that's typical of liquid filled pans. These pans are smaller than their Perfect pans that they 
Kevin their Bulletproof Glass palette. I have that the 24 set of those. Those, those are really nice too. Oh, I hope my camera is staying in focus Oop, because I hit a setting on it the other day and I forgot to change it back. So hopefully, hopefully we're all in focus. If not, well, you can just listen to my calming voice while you wash dishes or fall asleep. I don't know. Row one is done. Oh, wait, we can go back to that white. Let's go back and see how the white is going to fare here. We're going to let our, our stuff dry. Yep, as expected, it's a pretty weak um, mixing white. It's kind of, I don't know, I guess it's handy if you want to do pastels and you don't want to really make them opaque. You know, you want to make pastel color that's not super wishy-washy, that's not like going to run too much. You want to control the viscosity of the paint, but you want it pastel, but you don't want it opaque. You know, that that's what that's meant for, I think. All right, up next we have, I don't, I, I kind of wish, I'll have to turn my, my swatch around because I don't like having the mixing area in front of me like that. I'm going to move it over, over to the side though. This is kind of very awkward and I don't like it. In fact, I wish I left that that part off. <laughs> I'm taking this back off again. Oh, it's, there's probably a better way to remove this. And I think once, you know, once you're using the paint, then you're getting, there we go. Let's do that. Oh my. Okay, next up we have Compost Violet. Oh, that is so dark. Let's get some of that up here so we can fade it out and really see what it looks like. These do pack a punch. Whoa. The big paper I'm swatching on is my Fabriano Studio 25% cotton paper. That is a dark purple. Next one is Ultramarine Violet. Ooh, I love that color. Hopefully this one re-wets. Re well, sometimes Ultramarine Violet is a little tougher to re-wet. This should have some nice granulation in it. Oh, it looks like it will. I think the swatching paper they gave us is cotton. Well, interesting to see if this one granulates very well or not. Add some extra water to help encourage it to. Time will tell. The next one is blue violet. PB28, it looks like, or 29. I think it's 28. I need to get my little magnifier. I can't tell. PB20, is that? Gosh, it's still hard to see. PB29 and PR122, I think. Either way, it should granulate whether it's PB28 or PB29. Oh, that's pretty. Blue violet. All right, next up, Magello Blue, which is PB27 and PR2. Whoa, is that right? PR202, huh? PV27, which is Prussian blue, and PR202. Hmm. I'm curious to see what that color is all about. So there are some unique colors in here, which is nice. I definitely, it looks like a, like an endothrone blue or a Prussian blue. We'll see how that dries down. Endothrone tends to dry down kind of on the dull side. And Prussian blue can be unstable, so... It'll be interesting. Looks great on the swatch paper. 
that's smart though to like when you do when when a company's doing a swatch paper it's smart for them to use a better quality paper because it gives you a better impression of the paint the next one is Prussian blue just the straight P my PB 27 oh wow that is br that's a brighter PB 27 than I often see it looks way different than the other one or maybe I'm just got my eyes used to that one I'm, I've been doing purple so I'm a little bit acclimated to that I like to go over the edges of my swatch box just a little bit so I can see how transparent it is hmm. that sent me vibrant that'd be a nice mixing color if you prefer if you don't if phthalo, if phthalo blue is too bright for you the next one we have is Indithrone blue PB60 Oops. Well, that's a nice one. I hope that dries down well. That's a really vibrant in the throne blue. It's got some good flow to it. It blew, blew right into the, other, the neighboring one. Then we have Thalo blue. Now this one is, which version is it? It's Oh my gosh. PB 15. It looks like it's 15 colon 6. Or maybe it's... I might have to use my magnifier. It looks like 15 6, which is a phthalo blue red shade, I believe. I don't know, I'm going to have to look at that one under the um, under my magnifier because that doesn't look like it's a red shade to me. The next one is Ultramarine Blue Deep, and this one is a mix actually. They've got, um, it looks like PB29 and PV15. Hmm. This is the one that had the cracked surface. I hope that water isn't like getting, making a mess back there, like getting underneath the black part on the bottom, underside of that. Hmm. That's pretty. It's usually you don't see a mix for ultramarine. Oh, maybe because it's ultramarine deep. That's pretty though. Really pretty. Uh, oh, I'm starting to see some granulation in there already. Up next is cerulean blue, and it doesn't look like a traditional cerulean, I don't think. It is PV15 colon 3. This is what you typically see for a thalo blue. I noticed that sometimes the Korean companies will call that cerulean. Too much water on there though. Really useful color. Ooh, look at the granulation in that though. And the ultramarine deep. That's lovely. That's really pretty. Up next, cobalt blue number two. I'm pretty sure I have that one in a two, which will be handy for refilling. I'll have to make a note of what I have in tubes. That's a pretty one. Did I need it? No. Am I enjoying it? Yes. Do I need an intervention? All signs point to yes. <laughs> Seriously though. <laughs> But you know, there's been many times where I didn't buy a set of watercolors and I kicked myself because the price went up or it sold out and I couldn't get it anymore. For instance, Sennelier had their set of 48 half pans on Amazon for $140. 
like two days ago, and I went and looked today, and it was 277. So it went from 140 to 277 because they did they do that. The they do the oh that looks like a true cerulean. Yes, this is a true cerulean, cobalt cerulean PB36. So it's got the the true like western cerulean, and then it's got what a lot of the Asian companies call cerulean. Look at some of these granulating colors though. I, I never really think of Mission Gold as being a really granulating brand, but man oh man, look at some of these guys. They are beautiful. Look at that. Especially that. This is gonna be really nice. I like it, I like it when um when you've got a range of paint and all the colors kind of have a little bit of their own personality. That's what I like in a set because then I can have one paint box and it, you know, I feel like I can get that diversity of texture and that diversity of of color. Whoops, forgot to fill in. Forgot to fill in my little travel swatch here. This is definitely acting better than $100 out of paint, so I gotta say. Getting the swatch card, that's like, that's really nice. I'm impressed by little things, I guess. The next one is Indigo. And that one's a mix of, <laughs> I can't read it. Let's see, I see Prussian Blue, I see PBK7 and PB29. So it looks like it's a mix of Ultramarine Prussian and um, Black. Can't remember what derivative PB7 is. I don't know if that's a lamp black or a uh, carbon black. Or bone black, I don't remember. Uh, it should have a little bit of granulation in it though because of the ultramarine blue. This has got a, a strong green undertone. Interested to see what that does as it dries. It's not as blue as I would want for an indigo though. I'm sorry, it must have a, a lot of black in there because uh, it's a mixture of that color and that color and black. So the black is really, really taking over. All right, we're gonna work on the second half of the chart now. And I got a little purple on there, so I just scrubbed it out. So that won't be perfect, but that's all right. All right, up next we have Peacock Blue. And that's usually PB16, but I can't tell if it, it's a mix of either PB15-3 or PB16 something and PG7. Oh, it's such a pretty color. And I have a small tube of this, and I think I might even, oh, well, I don't know if I have that one in the palette. Really sheer, really pretty. Yeah, I can't read that, it's too small. I'll have to take a break and uh, look at this under my magnifying lamp because my little magnifying um, credit card thing there is just just not strong enough. And I have my new glasses on too. <laughs> Prussian green is our next color. And that is PB27 and PG7. So it's just a mix of, of uh, Prussian blue and phthalo green. Pretty though. Oh, it is a lovely color. And like a color like that's one I wouldn't buy just because it's so easy to mix. But then again, it's a, a color generally I probably wouldn't mix. I don't tend to use Prussian blue. I used to use Prussian blue a lot in my, um, when I taught, I used Prussian blue as my cool blue before I realized of its, um, of its potential fugitivity. And also phthalo blue is much brighter, so it does mix a little bit better, it's cleaner. So I switched to that for teaching, but Prussian blue is a beautiful color. Next up is Van Dyke Green, a mix of PG7 and PBR, looks like 25. 26, PBR 20, or PBK 26, oh my word, you guys. PBR 26. I'm not sure if that granulates or not. We'll have a look. Hmm. 
Wow, that's an interesting color. Van Dyke Green, huh? Very earthy. Let me put this right in the swatch there so I don't waste it. I did let the the other swatches dry before I continued on. And I'll do a glaze over these as well. Hmm. I want to put plenty of water and pigment in there. I want to see if it granulates. All right, next one is Viridian, but they're just using PG7, which isn't a true Viridian. It should be Viridian Hue. This is just a phthalo. The phthalo green. Useful though, very useful. I like to take that with like a like a yellow orange color and it makes a really beautiful sap green. If you ever get a like a set that doesn't have a sap green in it but it's got this color, this color is great for mixing. I'm just gonna fill that in a little swatch too while I'm at it. Then gradiate it down. My grade, it's not holding the gradation so well. I don't know if I should bother doing that, honestly. But it's nice to see a variety of like light and dark, I think, in a swatch. A little bit more up there. Mission Gold is not really known for flowing so much. I'm not sure if there's no ox gall in the paint or if it's just, just how they make paints in Korea. This next color is the one that was kind of sticking to the plastic. Probably should try to pop that down into the into the little pan there and stick it down. Let's see if I can. And maybe not. Bamboo green is PG36, so it's another thalo green. It's just thalo green yellow shade, and that is thalo green blue shade. So PB, PG7 and, and PG36 are both thalo blues. One is more yellowy and one is more blue. Thalo green, did I say thalo blue? Oh, I'm not used to talking yet today. It's a beautiful rainy Monday. I don't know why it is about rainy Mondays. I just think they're so poetic. And I, um, I bake some bread. First thing, I'm like, oh, I gotta have some bread. The, the dog never wants to walk that long on a rainy day, so I know that we're just be going out for 10 minute walks so she can do her business. So I started, I had my dough in the bread machine, and um, so I knew I'd be, you know, I could, it could get kneaded by the time I was back. And, oh, that's gorgeous. Hooker's green, that hooker's green looks like a beautiful sack green. Did I grab the right color, actually? One, two, three, four, five. Six, right? Yeah. That's beautiful. This is like a lovely sap green. Hooker's green usually a little bit uh, less earthy, but I like this better. I like that a lot. It looks like a sap green. I, I'll probably call this sap green if I use this on a tutorial. Uh, so anyway, I got my bread made and I baked it, and then just as the bread was about to come out of the oven, my daughter, Maisie, shows up. She goes to college up in Orono, and um, she wasn't feeling well. She had texted me, but I left my phone in my pocket when I was walking the dog, and I, I guess I had it on silent because I didn't hear it. And um, she had texted me, so it was okay to come home. <laughs> oh, well, of course it would be. So I joked that, oh, she smelled the bread all the way from Orono. She's upstairs having a nap now. School is almost done. This is olive green. That's a beautiful color, kind of like a green gold. Let's see what's in that. That one is... Oh, I can't read this. It's too small. I don't see green gold in there. Although, you know what? Actually, maybe it might. PY160 is in both of these, I'm pretty sure. I might have to write these out larger on the bigger swatch. That's a pretty color. i probably call that just green gold because it looks so much like green gold even though it's got some other colors in it. It's a little dirtier. The swatches are much prettier on this paper. This uh, paper that came with it because I think that's cotton. Now it does have a color they're calling sap green. Look at that. Hmm. Let's see what that's all about. And that's the next one. 
I think their sap green's brighter. I think I have, yeah, look how theirs is more like a May green or a spring green. Or I would call their hooker's green more of like a traditional sap green. It That's pretty though, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not, I am not regretting my purchase. I just feel a little ridiculous. I feel like I need to just, well, I have been, I've actually been just like trying to detox myself from like social media and also Amazon because it's just too convenient. It's too easy, too frictionless. Instead, I'll just, you know, tempt you guys to, to go there. This looks like a cobalt green. This is a permanent green number two. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Nice, clean, bright, grass green type color. I'm happy with this paint though. It's really nice. Next one, permanent green number one. A lot of good varieties of green. I don't think you need so many greens though because I think a lot of these greens can look kind of artificial. Plus you have all those yellows and cool blues you can mix from, but then again, if it's convenient. I think they got a lot of flack for having too many reds in their palettes before, but I actually like a lot of reds, but red's my favorite color, so that's probably why, but I just, I love different reds. And red is kind, is, is a primary, so it is kind of hard to mix a good red sometimes, like to get that exact shade that you want that's nice and pure, not muddy, and has that full saturation. Like you can mix a color, but it might not have the, the saturation that you want. Meaning like you could take magenta or you could take a red and, and nudge it this way or that way. But when you have a, a single pigment red, often it's going to be a lot more vibrant. That color was called yellow green. PG36, which is our phthalo green yellow shade and PY3 it looks like. So if you don't like mixed pigments, you might want to avoid this set because a lot of these colors have mixed pigments. But I would recommend their pure pigment set because then you can have all pure pigments and mix your own. But I'm a fan of this brand, so I kind of I'm a fan of quirky palettes, so I couldn't resist. Next up, we have greenish yellow. I bet that's gonna look like a green gold. The first the first pigment in it, I think, is a green gold. Oh, they do have a green gold as well, just on its own. So there's a lot of. Um, it'd be interesting to see what is in the what's in like the the smaller size palettes hopefully in the smaller size palettes you're getting more of the single pigments so that you can mix these other convenience colors that's pretty it's a pretty color very vibrant very useful but Oh yeah, a lot of these colors can be mixed. Yellow ochre number one, this is a mixture, how bizarre. This is a mixture of PY42 and PY150, mm, or 160, I can't tell. So it's probably gonna be a tangy yellow ochre. Actually, it's pretty, uh, It doesn't have a green undertone, I'm surprised. You might have some issues mixing. You might get some interesting colors if you mixed with this though, because of the um, the more greener pigment that's in there. But I bet it'd be a beautiful color if you mixed it with Prussian blue. In fact, I think we should try that. Let's see, where was there? Was Prussian blue it was a fifth one in. I wanna try that now. I bet you that's a pretty color. It's going to be a pretty color. Look at that. It is a pretty color. Makes a beautiful earthy kind of teal. That's a color that you have in the water, in the ocean. You see, I don't know how, how well you can see that, but... Yep. That's pretty. Next color is green gold. Let's see what their actual green gold looks like. Their pure green gold. Oh, it's very bright. Okay, I, you know what? I can see why they um, 
why they toned it down in those other mix why they gave us the other mixes because their green gold is extremely vibrant it's very much like an Aurelian very almost neon hmm. next up we have raw sienna I like raw sienna sometimes it granulates a little bit this one's this is a mix though py42 uh, PBR 26 is it and PY I'm gonna say 160 but you know what I cannot read that very well P no PY um, 85 PBR 26 or 25 and PY 42 PY 42 being the dominant wow that's a that's a robust that's a very robust raw sienna kind of um it's kind of orangey that must be from the brown I'm gonna mix that in that color too That's interesting I'm surprised at the luminosity and the brightness of some of these mixes that they have hmm. it's pretty I like it it's a very rusty yellow ochre raw sienna color the next one is gold brown Earth tones are tricky. Uh, in a lot of the brands that are more Asian and like Eastern European, I find their earth tones to be a bit weak. I haven't had really an issue with Mission Gold, but they have some weird earth tones. Now that their earth tones are weak, they've got some weird ones like maybe they don't get the access because earth tones are pretty cheap but i'm like wondering maybe the access to the supplies they have is not as good as what you have in other countries because their earth tones will often be almost electric looking they'll like be kind of artificial looking and it could also be preference in their culture for browns this one is burnt sienna and this is a bizarre mix um PBR 26, PR 112, PY 150. So this is going to be a, see how it's kind of spicy? It's kind of a spicy brown. It's not what you typically, it's orangey, you know, like a, like a burnt sienna would be, but this is like really kind of almost electrified. And when you try to mix with those colors, you can end up with some unusual colors that you're not expecting. Like you mix that with your, ultramarine you may not get that kind of Payne's gray color that you're expecting so that can complicate things because if you're a beginner and you're like okay my teacher said mix burnt sienna with ultramarine let's see what it will do let's see what this burnt sienna plus ultramarine see how it's got this really strong green undertone to it I don't know if that will show up on camera let me grab a scrap of my watercolor scraps. Oh, I don't have my well, I have to get my watercolor scraps when I do the um, when I take a break. But yeah, it's, this has definitely got a green a green undertone to it, and it's pretty. And the colors are splitting apart and doing some interesting things here on the palette. But it wouldn't exactly be what you were after the gray you were after if you're following a teacher that's using a traditional Western palette. Next up, we have Burnt Umber, and that is another Bizarre Mix. So their Pure Pigment, if you got the Pure Pigment set, it would have like normal, what we're used to for Earth. That's pretty, but again, it is a very lively brown, rather than it being just one brown pigment, like PBR7, they use, PBR7 is your first one, but then I think you've got a black in there, and then you've got a yellow in there, so it's kind of, is that a black? I think so, but I'm gonna have to look at it with the with my magnifier, my, my light up magnifier, because the print is just way too small and it's on textured paper. And it's pretty, it's very pretty. It's very pretty. But it is very vibrant and not as neutral, not as neutral as what you would typically get. Burnt sienna number two. Burnt sienna number two is PR102. So if you're familiar, like a lot of burnt sienna's, they'll use PR 101. 
I'm thinking PR102 might be the synthetic version or vice versa. One's a natural iron oxide, the other one's a synthetic. This is pretty weak actually. Let's, or maybe I got a poor brush load. I generally prefer PBR7 burnt sienna, but I mean, it's, that's, that is pretty though. It's personal preference, honestly. Some people prefer the other. Some people love Windsor Newton's Burnt Sienna, which is PR 101, and I find it to be really weak and too orangey. So everybody's different. It's not better or worse. We all have our own preferences. And hopefully seeing these swatched out, you can decide whether that's something you would love or you would rather, you know, who glad I saved my money, dodged a bullet, or, oh, that's great, I'm going to order it, you know. Wow, what is this? Red Brown. This is um, a single pigment color. PBR... Wow. 26, which is, I think, a benzenodite brown. My goodness, someone's in a, someone's in a rush to get a hold of me, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, that is a gorgeous color. It's almost like a dragon's blood. Mm. That would be interesting to mix with. You can just see, I mean, just see how vibrant the colors in this collection are. Mission Gold's a very vibrant brand. Not everybody likes it. I, I love bright colors. Um, so, I mean, that's probably why I really like Mission Gold. I really like Shinhan. And those are some brands that other people don't care for so much. But I also strongly encourage you to not, you know, try different brands. You don't need to have everything matching. It doesn't all have to be the same company. You can get some Daniel Smith. You can get some Schmincke. You can get some Windsor Newton. You can get some Shinhan. Uh, you can get some Da Vinci. And this is Raw Umber, PBR7, and PY86, it looks like. It's a strange little combination. But... Mission Gold does have some strange combinations, I will, especially if it's not the pure pigment colors. Next up is Van Dyke Brown. I think I put a little too much water in there. Oh, oh we got an interesting color coming up. The last one is going to be last but not least for sure. Uh, that's interesting. Van Dyke Brown. PBR7, hmm, that would be what I would typically call a burnt umber. Their burnt umber is a mix though. So that's, and I like Van Dyke Brown. That looks like it might even have some granulation to it. It's already settling out on the paper. Kind of like a Mars, kind of like a Mars Brown. All right, and last we actually have Cobalt Black, which should be granulating, PBK, uh, PBK27. I don't think I have, a cobalt black. I think this is my first cobalt black actually. So this will be a treat. Be a treat to try. I have a few granulating blacks. I have, um, oh that's pretty. I have a couple PBK 11s. The one from Renaissance is very warm. Oh my gosh, look at that granulate out. Wow, already. Um, that's going to be so nice for mixing moody skies and stuff. Oh, wow. That's already granulating. I might have to buy a tube of that. This is also the, look at that. Can you see that on camera? Holy cow. I got to hold that up to the camera. Look at this. Look at that already. That's insane. Oh, wow. That's gorgeous. Um, yeah, I have a few granulating blacks. Uh, I have a couple different PBK 11s that one has a cool undertone and one has a warm undertone. And then I have the liquid charcoal from Renaissance that is, um, that's, that granulates and it's, uh, it's pretty neutral. That one seems pretty neutral too. And it's heavily granulating. It's aggressive. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about this palette, to be honest. I don't regret buying it. And, uh, what I'm going to do is let this dry. And then we'll do a glaze over and we'll do some lifting. We'll see how it's uh, it's performing. And then I'll show you some paintings that I did with it. So it'll be future me. Future me will be back. <laughs> We're back. I decided to do the lift test and the glazing off camera because this video is just going to be way too long. 
Um, and also, I transcribed, I, I had to put, oh my gosh, you guys, I had to go and get my bifocals because my progressives were not cutting it, and I had to use my light-up magnifying lamp to be able to read the pigment information on this chart. I'm glad it's there, though. I'm so glad it's there. Somebody with sharper vision probably wouldn't have that problem, but, um, but I do. So, uh, I went through, and I really wanted to check out a couple of the pigments that I wasn't, that were, I was kind of drawing a blank on, because... Have you ever noticed this? Like, have you ever seen the word, like, say the word green, but it's written in blue? And it just kind of throws you off a little bit. It's like, oh, I thought I knew that pigment, but, you know, so some of the names were throwing me off a bit, so I had to just double check that I knew what the pigments were <coughs> before I went in and, um, uh, and, uh, gave my two cents about it. I have to say, I've, I've looked up all the pigments. I wasn't 100% sure I remembered and this set is really good as far as light fastness goes. Now, there is light fastness ratings, but I'm always a little hesitant to trust them if I'm not 100% sure on the pigment. But um, all the light fastness, light fast ratings on these paints are four and five, and they do a one to five scale. Anything three and higher is light fast. So three is light fast, uh, four is good light fast, and five is extremely light fast. Now, I love that they do this because not all companies do this and many companies use different scales. So what I'm the most familiar with is a ASTM light fast scale and also the blue wool light fast scale. And ASTM uses like they're like a one on ASTM light fastness range is the most light fast and a five on the ASTM light fast range is fugitive. And you really just want to be in the one and two with ASTM to have like products you would consider light fast. So if you look at Derwent light fast pencils, they're on the ASTM light fast range and they're all one and two. Um, most Western paints are on that scale of one or two. When you get over to the, uh, to a lot of the Eastern paints, they go on this other scale that's not the blue wool scale, it's something different. And I think that's what they're using here. Um, but they tell you what the stars mean, which is so helpful because sometimes you'll buy something and there'll be stars on your products and it's like, there's no key. It doesn't tell you what the stars represent, which is a problem because we've got many different scales. Another scale that I'm familiar with is the blue wool scale. And that has been mainly used for textiles, but I do know a lot of, um, like say British Derwent, except for the light fast products, they use the blue wool scale and a seven, eight is like the most light fast and anything above a five is considered light fast, you know? So it's, but like, you know, an eight is the best seven, eight is good, you know? And so it works the opposite way. So it's just, um, you, you need to know the key in order to understand your light fast scale. So just be sure that you know what your stars are referring to when you've got like a brand new box of colored pencils. You don't, they came from Amazon. You don't exactly know, you know, what the uh, rating is. You got to know what the range is in order to be able to tell. One thing I'll do if I'm not sure, if I bought, you know, some, some rando supply on Amazon, which I am fond of the rando supplies. I got to say, I'm fond of them. So if I'm not sure what the light fast ratings are, because they love to put light fast ratings on things, I will look for pinks and purples. And I will also look at the browns. And I know your brown earth tones are going to be the most light fast. So if, uh, if your brown has one or two stars, then I figure one or two is high light fast and like five is low. If your pinks have, you know, five stars, I know that's your lower light fastness. And I just kind of can pretty much guess what the scale is going from that, but I love it that they actually put it here. They actually put a lot of information on this chart, if you can read it. Get out your magnifier. If you can read it, there's lots of great information here. I actually went to the Amazon listing where I purchased these because I could zoom into the swatch enough to see the pigment names and the pigment numbers. It's kind of too bad that paint companies don't just use pigment numbers. If that was on real big print on the front of your tube, that would really solve a lot of problems. However, it may make beginners a little bit more nervous. It would be super helpful for those that, you know, they've just run out of their favorite carmine pigment and they don't know what the what are in these other tubes. If it just said like um, PR176 on the tube, you would know, oh, that's what my last one was, was PR176. I know this one's going to be very similar. It's made from the same pigment. Not always, though, because they can treat pigments differently, like especially in like your browns and whatnot to make them shift differently, but you get a pretty good, accurate representation. Oh, I just ran out of ultramarine blue. That's PB29. Pretty much any PB29 is going to look very, very similar. They may be milled a little bit differently. It might be slightly different, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Uh, 
So that's just my two cents. But anyways, I looked up any pigments I wasn't that familiar with, and I'm just gonna go through pigment by pigment. If you're not down for this, if this is like Lindsay, I'm gonna put this on when I need to go to sleep at night, and that's fine. I'll be the soothing voice to lull you into your dreams of colorful goodness. Absolutely. I have no take no offense to that. Um, thanks for the watch time. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with PW6. That's your classic titanium white. They called it Chinese white. I see that a lot. Um, Chinese white is usually PW5 or sometimes PW4. It's a very translucent white, whereas titanium white is generally a very opaque white. But they can extend this with other products, um, extra binder, extra humectant, probably some extenders and fillers to make it more translucent. And that's look that I think that's what a lot of watercolor brands do. Maybe PW6 is very cheap and it's just an easy way for them to do that. Um, and I think that's probably what they've done here. It's very translucent. It's a mixing white. It's basically just to keep your viscosity up in a paint that you want to lighten when maybe you don't want to just add water to it. But it's not going to make your paint opaque. It's not going to turn your paint to gouache. If you want a highlighting white, skip that. Get a get. Uh, this is my recommendation: is uh, if you want a highlighting white, is to get Dr. Ph. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's a gouache, but it contains a certain amount of. It has some sort of shellac in it that, or stain blocker that allows you to actually highlight on top of very vibrant, potent colors that would generally leach up through gouache and stain it. Uh, and like leach up that color. So this is my recommendation. If you want a color to mix with though, this might be a little too strong. If you want to make a pastel instead of a transparent, that's gonna work for you. If you want to make a gouache light color, this is gonna work for you. Or even any sort of commercial titanium white gouache, it's meant to be opaque, this is not. So when you get those little pans of white and you're like, why do they put this in my watercolor? This is not, I can't highlight with this. What is the point of this? It's really just for being able to desaturate your color without making it opaque. That's what it's for. I don't think many that's that's what many people want it for and um uh, it's kind of um that's what it's used for. It's very good for that. But I think a lot of people get very disappointed with that because it's not an opaque white. It's not really what it's meant for. It's very transparent. You can just add water, but sometimes having the extra water can cause puddles, backgrounds like if you look here, I have too much water in my glaze ended up getting some back runs. So by using the Chinese white, that's gonna give you, that's gonna keep your viscosity up so you don't end up with big puddles in your wash when you want that really light color. That's all it is. There's nothing wrong with using it. That's that's how it's used properly. And I think the problem is a lot of people don't know how to use it properly. Generally mixing water with your paint is the best option, but sometimes you're, it's gonna get, lead you to have back runs. And when you wanna lighten it up that much, I mean, that's that's a viable option. It's there. It's in your palette. That's what it's there for. It's not good or bad. I think people want to vilify white and black, and I used to, but um, I've been studying stoicism lately, and I think that I, you don't need to have an opinion whether other people use white in their paints or whether they use black in your paint. You don't. I don't need to have an opinion on that. You don't need to have an opinion on that. If people want to use it, let them use it. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. We can. We don't have to yuck on other people's yums. That's my, oh, this to say, that's pigment white six. <laughs> Titanium white, it's it's a good pigment. Use it however you want to or don't use it. I'm not gonna judge you. PY3, uh, P pigment yellow three. This is Hansi Yellow Light. This is a funny color because it's rated as quite light fast. It's got a four. The pigment white six has a five light fastness rating. This one has a four. Uh, Hansel Yellow Light is in almost every palette. I love it as a lemon yellow. I think it's so vibrant and so nice for mixing. It's such a clean, robust, cool yellow. But some, I don't know why, but some PY yellows will rate lower in light fast tests. Some rate really high. I've heard this, the uh, quality of this pigment has gone down over the, over the decades. It used to be a really um, light fast pigment. Now it's come into question a bit. That said, I use this all the time and I've used so many brands of it from Daniel Smith. It's in their essential set under their Hansi Yellow Light. It's in so many watercolor palettes I have under Lemon Yellow. I like it better than a Nickel Titanate Lemon when I'm mixing. And I think it's a, it's a really good color. I haven't had any issues with it browning or fading personally, and I've used many brands of it. So take that with a grain of salt. I also live pretty far from the equator, so I'm not getting that really strong sunlight through my windows as others may but I've never had any issue with it. It's just a little controversial lately. Maybe my paint's older and maybe that's why I'm not 
but I've gotten new paints and still have an issue with it. My Daniel Smith PW6, uh, PW3s have all been purchased in the last decade and I've not run into any trouble. It's in the mixing, the six essential mixing colors from Daniel Smith that I recommend, even though I'm not a super fangirl of Daniel Smith. I like that set. I think it's a good recommendation. Um, I have no, I am watercolor agnostic. I am not a, I am not going to, you know, preach any brand over another brand. If it's good paint, it's good paint. But uh, PW, uh, PY6, why do I want to say W? PY6, PY3, can we just start over? Let's call the whole thing off. Okay, PY3, I like it. I think it's, um, I think it's reliable. They give it a four star. And I agree, I agree. The next one, PY138. This one is one I had to look up. It is a uh, light, fast, staining, cool yellow. Uh, the name, it's a mouthful. Quinanthropin... <laughs> Quinith, quinothylone, quinothylone, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is a, it's a decent color, it's a nice cool yellow, so you've got two cool yellows here, it's got a five star light fastness rating, so if you're a little, you know, if you're worried about using PY3, I really don't think you need to be, but if you are, you can use that one, it's a little more light fast, and it's a nice cool yellow, it almost looks like it's got this undertone of, um, it kind of also reminds me a little bit of, of a Rulian, it's got a, when you have it really thick, it almost goes a little warmer, and Aurelian does that too, but Aurelian is, uh, that's cobalt yellow, it is known to brown over time and it's not really a light fast color and I love that color, it's a beautiful mixing color, but I would trust Hans uh, Hansa Yellow Light or this yellow over Aurelian just for that, for that factor. Uh, Aurelian might granulate a bit though because it is a cobalt yellow, so eh, you know that use what you want to use, just know what you're using. The next one is PY65, and you're going to see PY65 in a lot of these mixes. PY65 is Irolide or Hansa Yellow Deep. It's a very light, fast, warm yellow. They call it Permanent Yellow Deep here. It's a very good mixing yellow. Um, you could use it in place of New Gamboge. In fact, there's probably some New Gamboge that either uses this or a mixture of this, maybe with PY110. I think it's a good yellow. I think this, and this is a single pigment, and that makes me even happier. And I have this in the, their single pigment, uh, the pure pigment colors. And I have to say, um, I think I would recommend the pure pigment set of 24 because it's such a steal of a deal. It's like $61 or something on Amazon. It's, and you get honking tubes, 24 honking tubes, which is more paint than what you're getting in these 48 half pans. I would say go with that because so many of these colors are mixes and I think you could probably mix some of the contents of that and have more options. But this is a really sweet palette and uh, and I really want to um, to go into this because, I don't know, are you a sucker for a novelty palette? I sure am. The next one, we've got... Um, Yellow Orange, which is a mixture of PO73, which is a beef, but pyrrole orange is what you probably have seen it on. It's a very light, fast orange pigment. It's excellent. You can mix that with your Viridian and get some really gorgeous, like, uh, earthy greens. Um, and a mixture of PY65, which we know is light, fast. Um, Mission Gold is giving both of these a four-star rating, uh, which makes me think they're really uh, bullish on their ratings. They don't want to, is that what I mean? Is that, am I using that right? Bullish or bearish? They're conservative. They're conservative on their ratings, I think, and that's good. Then we move over to PR254. That is a pyrrole red. It's a neutral to warm. I would actually call that warm. Yeah, I would call it kind of a warm leaning red. It's a great alternative to a naphthol red it's a it's much more light fast they're giving it a five star rating i don't disagree with that it's a just a gorgeous warm red great for mixing oranges um yeah great great color now we have pr176 that's a deep red um light fast color also known as carmine in other brands it's a really stable cool red it can be hard to find a stable cool red because a lot of your cool reds are organic um yeah, they're organic laked pigments and they tend to, like when you get a pigment, either an, um, when you get an organic or a synthetic or an organic pigment, those pigments tend to be a little less light fast. That's a really good one. It's a great alternative, in my opinion, to alizarin crimson or other fading reds. They're calling this one Rose Matter, which, and they're giving it a four star rating, which I think is fair. It's a, it's a nice, nice cool red, a great alternative to Crimson PR83, which is very fugitive. And then we have uh, PR177, which is anthrocrinone red, known 
they're calling it burgundy red, but it's known as anthraquinone red. Now this one, actually, they're giving a five star rating too. And I think the PR176 is actually a more light fast color. But this is also another good option if you're looking for a lizard crimson that's a little more permanent. Um, yeah, it's they call it burgundy. That's not what I think of when I think of burgundy. I think more of like a whiny red. But uh, and I love burgundy. It's one of my favorite colors. I have a wool coat burgundy. I bought it in 1996. First coat I ever bought with my own money. It was like one of my first paycheck things. I still wear it. It's gorgeous. I need to replace the liner, but that's neither here nor there. I love red. It's a good, I love all shades of it. Um, and actually, except I like warmer to neutral reds, I should say. Um, or like a really crisp, crisp cherry red. But anyway, uh, yeah, good pick. Here we go. We've got PR202. And that is... Um, your Quinacridone Crimson Lake, they're giving that a, a five-star rating. And that's another single pigment color. It's a nice, rich, bright, kind of purpley red magenta color and great for mixing. It's, um, yeah, it's a nice vibrant, vibrant fuchsia color. And most of your quinacridones are pretty light fast. That's a quinacridone stalos. They stain, but they're very light fast. You can see I've done the stain, the lift test on these just to see what I could lift up on these. Um, they've got some staining, but that's not unsurprising. Then we've got PR122. They are calling it Quinacridone Permanent Magenta. And you're going to see that color mixed in other in other mixtures too, to uh, like in your purples and whatnot. It's a nice transparent. Most of these colors are very transparent. I don't see any op opacity really on these. So if you want a really vibrant, transparent line of paints, this is Oh, excellent option. It's very affordable. It will, it's not affordable everywhere. It's affordable on Amazon. It's affordable. Um, it can be one of the more expensive brands depending on where you buy it, but I've found, had really good luck on buying these on Amazon, really good prices. Um, and then over here, we've got PR122, that color again with PB29, which is ultramarine blue, but I don't think it's got much in it because it's, those colors aren't that different and I'm not seeing any texture of granulation in there. So that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of mixes here. So if you went with a pure pigment color, it's better for your budget. It's gonna learn, it's gonna learn you more, but it's such a cute palette. I'm a sucker, <laughs> I'm a sucker. I didn't need these, but uh, I spend my money so you can get the itch and not spend yours, I guess. Then we've got this color here. This is Compose Violet and it's composed of PB15 colon three, which is your Thalo blue, and, or they call it Cerulean blue in, um, in a lot of in a lot of Asian colors, they do that, but that's what we would know in a, in Western watercolor as thalo blue with PR one twenty two, which is our um, which are which is our uh, quinacridone permanent magenta magenta, and yeah, just a nice non granulating smooth dark violet, violet color, very similar to um, dioxazine violet. You'll notice there's certain pigments that you don't tend to see in certain lines, and I'm not sure why. It must be availability. And then we've got our ultramarine violet, which uses PV15. And PV15 is a very bluish violet. It's uh, it's fairly light and it granulates beautifully. It's your ultramarine violet. But they've added to that uh, your thalo blue and the quinacridone magenta. So and again, it's another mix. I would personally have rather them put in this set just a straight PV15. That would be, I think, much more useful because then you can mix it however you want but they don't for whatever reason, maybe expense. I think it might be a more expensive color. I have that in Renaissance and it's a gorgeous color. I highly recommend the Renaissance tube. It's very inexpensive and it rewets quite well. Um, and, oh gosh, I have a coupon code for it too. On my, just search Renaissance coupon code on my blog and it'll be there because I know I'll forget to say what it is, but that's a, that's a wonderful one to have in a tube. I think I have the Turner version too, if I'm remembering correctly, which is also lovely. There's might be a mix. I, I, I'm i drawing a blank right now, but um, then we're moving on to Blue Violet, which is a mix of PB29, which is ultramarine blue, and PR122, which is our beautiful quinacridone magenta. Again, just give me the PB, PB29, just give me the magenta, let me mix my own. The thing I will say though, is that I wouldn't necessarily mix those colors together. So this does give you a little um, kind of a brain spark, a little brainstorm, I think. This one right here, which is a quite a dull, um, they call it Magello Blue, but it's kind of like, um, it's almost like an indigo. I would almost call this just indigo blue. It's a mix of Prussian Blue, PB27, and PR202. And uh, PR202, gosh, I'm having a, I'm having a, 
Oh, right up here. Oh my gosh, we were just talking about that. It's a, um, it's a quinacridone crimson lake. They mixed this color and that color to get that dull purple, which would be a really nice shadow color. I think you could even use it as a really moody shadow in portraits. It doesn't granulate, so you've got um, a smoothness to it, which would be, I think, probably kind of nice in a portrait where you don't necessarily want that texture. Then we've got PB27, which is Prussian blue. This, they're, what are they listing that as? Um, let's see, these, all these violets have been five stars. They're listing the press, Prussian blue at five stars. Prussian blue is a, is, is a color that is relatively stable, but if it gets too much light exposure, it can turn kind of brown. So then you've got to put it away, away from the light for a few days and it will come back. It will uh, recharge itself. I, who was it that said, um, I think it was Kimberly Crick. She's, she's delightful. I think she said, I don't like to give my, I don't like to have to put my paintings away for a nap so that the colors come back or something. I, I think it was her that said that and that just stuck in my mind. But then I just think putting my painting down for a nap so the color will come back, which made me laugh. And I always think about that. She's delightful. If you ever want a second opinion on a watercolor brand after watching one of my tutorials or anybody else's tutorials, go to Kimberly Quick's website and, and see if she's reviewed it. And you can take her word to the bank, in my opinion. Uh, I would trust anything she told me. I always say get a second opinion too whenever you're thinking about spending money on paint because, you know, somebody might... I love this because I love really bright, transparent colors but somebody else might have a different opinion. This is not a traditional palette. If you're looking for traditional colors, like go for um, Sennelier, go for Winsor Newton. They're very soft, subtle, traditional paints. These are, hit you over the head, wow, bright colors. I love that. But if we're different, you might, you won't like the same things that I like. So seek a second opinion. But these are nice and light fast. And that's something that uh, Mission Gold has come under controversy or under criticism for in the past of them using some fugitive pigments. But these, I think they've really, with these uh, triple pans, which I think they call them triple pans because they're triple filled. I can't read the brochure because it's in Korean, but then they show like filling the pans three or four times. I think they're showing it filling it three times. So I think that's why they're calling it triple pans because it's been filled with liquid triply three times, you know? Um, I think that's what they mean. Anyway, let's get back to the pigment information. Holy cow, are you sick of hearing me talk yet? I am. Uh, so Prussian blue, we've talked about that. Indithrone blue, now this is a gorgeous Indithrone blue. I really like this. Um, it's really vibrant, it's rich, it doesn't dull down, and that's something that you can have an issue with. I bought a tube of the Blick Indithrone blue because I was looking for an alternative to Prussian blue and indigo, and it was single pigment. I'm like, well, that's great, because generally your single pigment colors are gonna be more vibrant. That was such a dull color. It's almost like it was like dull and chalky and just blech. Lucas into Throne Blue was better. I liked it more, but it was still wasn't really that luminous. Lucas watercolors are more subtle, I will say, and now they've changed and I am hesitant to recommend them because they're, they got bought and one of the colors I purchased from the new buyer, the new owner was not up to their old standards in my opinion, so I'm hesitant to rec recommend their, their paint now. Um, but this into Throne Blue is beautiful. It's, um, it looks like it's very finely milled. I don't see any granulation really. It's just like this almost rich royal blue that is lovely. And it's like, it's brighter than a blue jean. It's definitely brighter than a blue jean. It's more neutral than Prussian. I think it would maybe, it's actually very neutral. It's a very neutral royal blue color. I think it would mix quite quite nicely. And um, yeah, it's, it's probably one of the prettiest endothrone blues I've ever seen. Very nice, very nice color. This one right here, they're calling it Thalo Blue, but if you're used to our Thalo Blue, you're used to something more like this. This one, and it looks, it doesn't look very red shade, but it is PB15 colon six, which is Thalo Blue Red Shade. It's got a five star rating, so does the End of Throne. I, actually, I think all their blues, all their blues have a five star light fastness rating, which is their highest rating. This slightly leans to red, but not much. Um, I still think, I still wouldn't call it a warm blue personally, but I also have a sandwich between ultramarine and in the throne. So that could be why it's like, yeah, it looks a little more green to me, but in, it could just be in, um, just being bracketed by those two colors, but it's a considered thalo blue red shade. I've got thalo blue red shade in M Graham, very similar. I also don't think it looks like it's leaning towards red to my eye, but it is redder than say this, PB15 colon three, your typical thalo blue, which they call cerulean blue. That's why we get confused, friends. I wouldn't blame you if you're confused because it's confusing. Um, so this looks quite green because it's right next to the ultramarine. 
their ultramarine also has PV15, which is ultramarine violet, in addition to the PB29, which is ultramarine blue. Beautifully, aggressively granulating color. If you want texture, that's a gorgeous textured color. Um, I don't think I have any. I don't think I have another tube of that color. I have their their single pigment ultramarine blue, but this is this uh, ultramarine blue deep is aggressively granulating. It's got two granulating pigments together and it's it's stunning. It's really stunning. I would buy a tube of that for sure. Actually, I have a tube of Turner's Ultramarine Blue Deep. It's very affordable. It's very similar. It's aggressively granulating. So I don't need to do that. I need to tell myself that. I don't need any more tubes of anything. But um, if I was going to buy another tube of paint, you could bet your bottom dollar that's on the list. It's on the list along with that one. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so then we've got our PB15 colon 3, typical thalo blue, they call it, um, cerulean blue. Just something you want to you wanna keep your eyes open about, because if I say, use cerulean blue, I'm talking about that color. And probably most Western watercolor teachers would also be referring to a color like that if they said get some cerulean blue. This is PB28 cobalt blue, which is a granulating warm blue, neutral, warm to neutral blue, not quite as warm as ultramarine typically, but... Um, Maybe with pigment PB28, which is granulating a little bit softer in look generally to ultramarine blue, a beautiful color, uh, cobalt blue. PB36, they're calling this one cobalt cerulean blue. And this is what in the West we consider cerulean blue. This is gorgeous granulation. In fact, I think I like this more than my M. Graham cerulean blue, which is what I have in my portable painter right now and um, a cerulean I've always loved. But I think this is a little bit more texture. And I like to use cerulean in my um, seascape skies because it's got that, it's just such a beautiful hue. I like to use that with Potter's Pink. Generally, I wouldn't even need something this aggressively granulating if I wanted some texture because I got the Potter's Pink in my palette as well. Um, but that's a, that's a beautiful color. This one, Indigo, I'm not too keen on. I really don't think it needs to be here where we have so many other moody blues, but um, it's a mixture of ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, and um, your carbon black PBK7. So I just think it's kind of a nothing color to me. It's just kind of flat and dull. And um, I, I think they'd be better, even in, especially in the Mission Gold range, I think there's better colors they could have in there. I probably won't use that color up, honestly. I might have to just use it as thumbnail studies, value studies or something, because it's just it's just such a meh color compared to these other options that we have. I think that's kind of a meh color too, honestly. But hey, whatever, so we like different things. That's the great thing about being a human. Uh, let's fold this up so we're not distracted by all the other colors and continue on. I zoomed in a bit. Now we are up to Peacock Blue. That is a mixture of PB15 colon 3, which is a phthalo blue, and PG7, which is that guy right there. So we have both, both, both of those pigments, this pigment and that pigment. We really don't need a mix, but that is a pretty popular color, so I could see it. I think it's one of their kind of um, signature colors, so I, I understand why it's there. It's got a five-star light fastness rating. Sometimes you see Peacock Blue, which is PB16, but that's a little less light fast, but it is a single pigment color. And I've seen that in, um, in some other brands, some other Asian brands, but I can see that I think they're really trying to go for a more light fast option. And that's why they're doing some of the mixes they're doing in this set. That would be my opinion. Like I said, I can't read the brochure because it's in Korean, but, um, but that's my hunch here. This next one, Prussian Green, is a mixture of PB27 and PG7, and I was thinking that there might actually be a single pigment Prussian Green out there. Maybe I'm misremembering. But anyway, again, it's a mix of this and this, and we really don't need it. It's a pretty color, but um, yeah, easy, to, easy enough to mix. Here we have Van Dyke Green, which is a mixture of, you guessed it, <laughs> it's a mixture of Van Dyke Brown, PBR25, Actually, it's not what they're using for the Van Dyke Brown. It's actually a mixture of ben, Benazone, oh my gosh, can I even say it? Benzmadone Brown and um, and Thalo Green, uh, which they call Viridian. So that's kind of interesting because that's a very red green. Benzmadone uh, Brown is a very red brown. They mix that with a very bright green and they get this really earthy, uh, really earthy green. Actually, I do like to use this Viridian Hue here, this PG7, to make greens. It makes a beautiful sap green if you mix it with a orange leaning yellow. It's it's stunning. Um, and it's such a strong color that it will stay nice and vibrant and transparent when you do that rather than having like a sludgy like chrome oxide green or something like that. So hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Again, we could have mixed that. That's not necessary. 
Uh, next up we have, they call it Viridian. Viridian is generally, I believe it's PB18 or PB17. One is chrome oxide green, the color I hate. The other one is Viridian, the color, a color I like, but it's hard to rewet. Um, M. Grimm has the best Viridian in my opinion. Um, but this is called Viridian. It's, it's actually a hue. It's Thalo green blue shade, and this is Thalo green yellow shade and PG36, and they call it bamboo green. And bamboo green, I think, is kind of a common name among Asian paints for this, for PG36. I really like these two greens. I think they're excellent in a palette. They look very artificial. They're um, a, a Thalo based green, so I believe they're a synthetic organic. They are extremely transparent, vibrant, and have an excellent light fastness rating. So for mixing greens with those two, it's wonderful. Now, if you mix it with a fugitive yellow, though, that yellow will fade out and you'll be left with those greens. But um, but they're a great base green to adjust. On their own, I think they're a little artificial looking, but they're gorgeous to start with. Now, you're going to notice that a lot of these greens are made from those colors. So that's a kind of a fun thing about doing a little pigment sleuthing is you it can help you learn mixing colors because mixing colors by sight is how we learn how to mix. But as you get older, sometimes it's hard to trust your sight and trust that you instinctively know how to mix and having that validation of like, okay, that's a green pig, that's that pigment. I know, I know it's going to work with that because you'll start to remember the pigment codes. It may help you as an adult, adult learner mix colors accurately. Um, at least you know what's in your paint and you don't have to buy mixes if you don't want to. You know you can make them yourselves. Oh, something else I want to mention about Mission Gold. I don't have their 36 set with that comes with the palette. It's a, it's like, I think it's under $60 on Amazon, but, um, oh, actually no, their first pure pigment set. And I don't know if they still have that literature in it, but it would tell you how to arrange your palette and put the colors, mix the colors to make all the colors in their, uh, 36 set or 48 set or something. So it was kind of neat that they were like, Hey, get this pure pigment set and I'll show you, here's the recipe to mix all those other colors that we sell basically, which I thought was really neat rather than being like, no, no, don't mix just buy all our colors. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. So that was in the pure pigment set. Uh, I think I'll probably link that up as well. Cause I recommend that one over this just for value sake and learning sake. Now we're going over to Hooker's Green. This is a beautiful Hooker's Green. Generally, Hooker's Green is not to my liking because it's a little too cold and flat, but this is actually a very lively Hooker's Green. And I have to say something about their paints is most are very lively. This is a mix of PG36, which is that phthalo green warm shade, PBR25, which is our Benzmadine Brown, and PY150, which is nickel azo yellow, which is kind of almost like a green gold. It's got, it's, um, we have it here. It's that one right there. It, when used thickly, it looks warm. When used thinly, it looks cool. It can easily be shifted to a cool, um, um, a cool green. It's a cool yellow. It's very much. It's, it reminds me of Aurelian also. So it's a very super super transparent yellow. Yeah, and that brightens up that brown and that green color and gives it that lift that. It, that it needs, in my opinion. Uh, this one here, olive green, is again PG36, and then we've got PY150, and then we got PR112, pigment red 112, and then we have PBR25, and uh, that is a very earthy, yellowy green. It's got a five-star light fastness rating. It's a good. It's a good option. All right, and uh, let's see, going on to Sap Green. They use PG36 and PY150, which I think is kind of, this reminds me of Winsor Newton Sap Green. It's not my favorite shade of Sap Green. If, to me, it's just a little too springy, a little too much like a May Green. And then we've got these permanent green colors in here, which I think they're so easy to mix. I can't imagine using these right out of the tube as convenience colors, unless I was doing a lot of like lilies and uh, botanicals that have that really bright fresh green in the stem. Maybe if you're doing some illustration, these would be very handy. But for me, this is too many samey greens. They have, uh, and also these four greens only have a four star light fastness rating. So it's, in my opinion, I would just go with the base greens and I would mix with yellow and, and keep a higher light fastness rating, I think. And that's, so I wonder if those yellows have four stars and that's why. Yeah, maybe they're mixing with PY3. No, they're mixing, well, that one mixes with PY3. Okay, that's why they have the lower light fastness rating because they have PY3 in the mix. So that's why these four have a lower light fastness rating than these is because instead of just using the PY65 to brighten it up and lift it, they're using PY3, PY3. But if they used the, um, the PY150, they could keep a higher light fastness rating and still lift the color up a bit. So 
it's it's a small change it's a small change it's only one starlight fastness different but when you know that about your pigments you can um you can mix the absolute most light fastness colors like to me this is these are all just too samey to be on a palette together did i buy it yes do i regret it no nah. but do i didn't know i didn't need it i didn't need it so you can see through here that they we're using the same pigments that we've been talking about so far. I'm not going to repeat that because you can see that that uh, list online and it, this video is getting so long. So let's move down to this final row where we've got our our the remaining bits of uh, neutral and some yellows. We've got POI 150 right here. This is green. They're calling this green gold. Um, often POI 120 is called green gold. Um, but sometimes PY 150 is called green, green gold, and I was calling that green gold, I think, when I when we first went through, when I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing for the pigment number because they were too small. Uh, here we've got PY 50 mixed with PY 42 for their yellow ochre number one. I don't know why they don't just keep it straight PY 42 unless they did that to increase the transparency and increase the brightness and the uh, saturation of the color, which would be on point for um, for Mission Gold. They are known for their brightness, so I can see why they would have done that. Personally, I would say go for the single pigment color just because it gives you more options, you know. Um, and then they've got this color here, which is greenish yellow, which is your green gold, plus your Thalo green yellow shade, PG36, and then PY65, which is your, um, your very light, fast, uh, kind of warmer yellow up here. I don't know why they'd warm that up. If they wanted it to be a, a greenish yellow, why they would warm it up, but they decided to, they must have wanted to temper some unpleasantness out of it. Because the color's pretty and it's very transparent. It may have been a little too green or a little too something that, or a little less stable or something. Oh, look at this. This is, uh, their swatches on 100% cotton, uh, three, uh, 300 gram rough Bao Hong Academy paper. Ah, that's why I liked it. I like that Bao Hong Academy. That's a steel video too. If you find that floating around, that's a good buy. All right, here we go. I wonder if that's made in Korea. Hmm, I'm not sure. Now we've got raw sienna. And again, this could just be a single pigment color. It usually is. Sometimes they use um, PBR7. Sometimes use PY42. But, they, but this brand is using PY42, which is like your yellow ochre. PY65, which is that light, fast, warm, yellow, deep that we saw at the beginning, and PBR25, which is that reddish benzodiazepine brown. They call it red brown in their line. It's a pretty color, but like I said before, I, I would prefer personally to have the um, the single pigment. But they do have a nice, rich array of neutrals, and but I don't like how they're mixed because the reason I like the mi how they're mixed is because I like to mix my neutrals with other colors, and then it gives you weird combinations. I was gonna grab, um, I was gonna grab just a scrap of paper, but you know what? I'm just gonna use, I'll just use this. Let's. I want to do some mixes because I want to illustrate what I'm talking about here. So let's say I'm doing a tutorial and I say, students, I would like you to mix a gray. We're gonna make our own gray, and we're gonna use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna because those are the colors I often use to make a brown. So I've got my palette here, and I'm gonna take some ultramarine blue. And that one is right here. I'm gonna take some ultramarine blue and I want you to mix it with burnt sienna. So you're not thinking about what pigment did they use. You're gonna use burnt sienna from their, what they say on their swatch, right? So let's see, that one is the sixth one in. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's that color right there. So I'm gonna go with my sixth color in. And this should be a very neutral gray. Well, okay, I'm gonna put a little more blue in there because that's a little too brown. And I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but this is a very green undertone to it. So it's not really that neutral color that you would be going after. It will work, but it's not gonna be exactly like what I'm what I'm asking you to mix. So it's just kind of things like that that can that can throw you off a little bit and make make the learning process a little difficult. Now, if you use the burnt sienna number two, which is a single pigment, PR102, which is a natural red um, iron oxide, as opposed to PR101, which is a synthetic, that that's what you usually see. We use that one. That one should be a little bit better because it's got more red in it. Oops, that's not the right, is that the right color? I'm getting confused. 
One, two, three, four, five in. One, two, three, four, five. This one right here. Although this one might go a little purpley because of how much um, red and violet is in that ultramarine mix. So while, I mean, you're, you're still getting in that neutral, in that neutral realm, it's not perfectly neutral because of the, um, of the multiple pigments in our mixes. So as that's splitting apart there, I love, I love the granulation in some of these colors though. Now I can look at this and I can say, okay, I'm getting too much green in here. I'm seeing like a lot of, a lot of yellow and a lot of green. I can adjust that because I'm, I'm familiar with painting and mixing color. Or I could see, oh, that looks a little, a little too, that's looking a little purple. I think I'm going to add a little bit of green to that, or I'm going to, I'm going to shift that a little bit. But if you're new to mix, to mixing color, that could be quite difficult. And you're like, how come this isn't working for me? I'm following what my teacher's saying and it's not, I'm not getting the right color. So that's why, that's why I really urge students to have single pigment colors if they can and customary names on their paints because it, because and when I'm painting with this I'm gonna use my Western customary names with these I'm never gonna remember what these are I'll be able to see my swatch but reading this fine print while I'm painting I usually my swatch quite a ways away I'm not gonna be able to read what that says and plus you might be using a different a different brand of paint so I, I don't think I recommend this palette for beginners just because of that but and unless you're you know you're not mixing so much but for someone who loves paint, loves pigment, I think it's a lot of fun and uh, unnecessary, but boy, a lot of fun. Where were we? We were at Raw Sienna, I think, right? Uh, Raw Sienna, yes. Uh, now we are at Gold Brown, which is a mix of PBR25, which is that guy right there, and a mixture of PY65, which is that one right there. Weird combination, why would you do that? We don't, I mean, we've got that. I just want to, I just want a PBR7 brown. We actually have one in Van Dyke brown over here. It's actually a very cool version of PBR7. And that's the thing, like, depending on what they do to the pigment, um, you could get, uh, you could get a brown that's more yellow, one that's more red, more that's more blue or, or neutral or kind of blackish and cold. So you can't always just go by the, uh, by the numbers, but it will give you a good indication about what you're going to get. This burnt sienna, which is a mixture of PBR25, that very red brown, PR112, which is a uh, red pigment, PY150, which is that gold, that uh, green gold there. So these pigments, I believe, are mixed together in the Magello line because it adds lift and brightness to the color and transparency. So it's not, that's, I, in my opinion, what makes it not a traditional line of watercolors. It's that brightness. And I, you either love it or hate it, I think. It's definitely will throw you for a curveball if you're used to more subtle trends, uh, traditional subtle trends, traditional colors. All right, now this is a uh, this burnt umber is pretty good. It's a mixture of PBR seven, and that's the first pigment, which is great. That's what I usually look for in a burnt sienna or a burnt umber because they can treat it differently, make it cooler, make it warmer. Then we've got PBR twenty five, which is our reddish brown, and then PY one fifty, which is our golden yellow for lift, I believe. Then we've got the burnt sienna number two, which is PR102, which is synthetic uh, red iron oxide. So you probably have seen PR101 in lots of pigments. It's in Indian red, English red, um, Venetian red. It's those usually very opaque earthy red pigments. Um, this one is very transparent and it's a natural version. Like they dug it out of a mine versus they made it in a laboratory. So pigments can be synthetic or um, natural and they can be organic or inorganic. So you can have a synthetic organic. So it's basically a, a color that's made that's very similar to a like a flower petal or something like that, something that was alive at one time. And then you've got your inorganic things, things that were never alive at any time. And they can be synthetic or natural, which it just blows my mind. How can you have a synthetic organic? How can you make something that is organic that just kind of like, I guess it's like lab grown meat, I don't know, but it's just kind of blows my mind. But those brighter colors are generally your synthetic organics and your duller colors are uh, either your natural or synthetic inorganic or mineral based colors. So just science is fun, isn't it? Um, then we've got our PBR25, um, 
Benzema, Benzema, I can't just say it anymore. I've got, I've used up my, I've used up my sayings of that color. PBR 25, it's a gorgeous reddish brown color, very light, fast, very transparent. Um, most of these are, except the, the ones that are yellowy based are four stars. All the other ones seem to be five stars here. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice, transparent, warm brown. Again, you mix that with your blue, you're going to end up with a purpley gray. You're not going to get that, you know, that gray, gray color if you're trying to make a neutral, but then we have raw umber, which is a color I never choose. To me, it looks like a uh, newborn baby poop and uh, it's not a color I wish to have back in my life. <laughs> I've had three children, <laughs> but it is uh, just kind of a dull poopy brown. And they've mixed theirs with PY65. I don't know, trying to help it, but it's, uh, I don't like that color in any line. It's, it's right up there with chrome, chrome, oxide, uh, chrome oxide green for me. But you might like it. If you like it, use it. Then we have Van Dyke Brown, a PBR7. That's a really nice brown. It's a uh, kind of cool leaning. So if you need a break from all these reddish and yellow browns, go for your Van Dyke Brown. And then this color was such a beautiful surprise, PBK27. I do not own this color in any other line. It's um, a cobalt black. It is uh, cobalt and carbon, I believe. It's, um, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's cobalt and iron. And I believe it's the iron that's giving it that aggressive, aggressive granulation. PBK11, which is very popular for its granulation, is an iron black, a Mars black. It's got these iron filings in it, basically. It's magnetic. This might even be magnetic. I didn't test it. But, um, yeah, it's just I've got this really beautiful granulation. And I, you don't see it around very often. That's kind of rare. So that's kind of fun that they threw in a rare pigment. So we've got a lot of pigments making double appearances in this line. Um, for contrast, I wanted to show you a couple other Mission Gold sets. This is, of course, the palette we've been reviewing today. I took out one of the wings. I'm going to show you the pure pigment colors here. And with the pure pigment colors, like I said, they gave you a brochure in the set, at least they in the first set. I can't remember if the second one did or not. That tells you how to mix all of their convenience colors. But you could see what beautiful pure colors are in the 24 pure pigment set. I got a few extra colors because they changed the palette. I rebought the sex. I liked it so much. Then they had to change a few of the colors, which I think are those. I can't remember what they took out, but anyway, you would see how vibrant and gorgeous these colors are. They added a cobalt turquoise and a cobalt green deep, which I think is really nice. I have a review on that if you're curious like what changed with the line. I have a, I'll try to link up all my Mission Gold videos as well so you can have those. Um, so this is, I mixed the sap green because I thought, oh, I love sap green. I'm going to mix it, but I don't like their sap green. And it's the same sap green that's in their, um, that's in their set here that came pre-made. But it's, it's fun. They tell, they tell you how to do it. I'm sure that's probably on their website too or online somewhere. But so this is a representation of the pure pigment stuff they have. I put mine in this old core tin. Um, Dr. Peach Martin sells these little palettes and I cut it down to fit in here and that's where I have mine. And I did mix up some of the um, the convenience green and also the peacock blue. I had a little tube of that. I think I just squirted that in there. But um, fabulous, really fabulous paints. Got to keep them flat. They like to travel. The other, the old pan sets look like this. And I have to keep the swatch on the outside of the palette because it is so sticky. So I like this, this design a lot better. But I do like the size of these pans. The downside is, though, you've got pans on the top. And this is having a hard time opening, so I'm thinking that it's probably sealed itself shut again. Oh my goodness, can I, am I opening it wrong? Here we go. So with this, they've got half the pans on the, pot, the bottom and half on the top. And you can buy this still on Amazon. I broke a nail. Um, and I think it's the same price. I think these are both around $100. This one might be a little bit cheaper. But I like how this is all on one level. I don't like having the paints, some on the top and some on the bottom. If you store this on its side, it's going to flow. The paint's going to run. If you don't have it completely flat, it can run. Um, somehow, they do seem to stay put if I leave it completely flat like that. But I would much rather have all my paints on one side and have the mixing area on the other side. You do get more paints in the pan here. Um, so I think that's probably why they're more or about the same price for double the colors. This is double the colors than that. I think there's like almost twice as much paint in one of those pans. But that's what they used to look like. This is what this color palette is. Um, 
in comparison if you just want to take a screenshot and see how they how they differ uh, because there's so many mixes in this and so many samey colors I think you'd probably do just as well with this but I did notice some trouble mixing some colors with this palette with my browns getting some weird teals when I was trying to mix grays because of the um, uh, the mixes in their colors so just something to something to keep in mind if you are trying to decide what palette set to get I like that those are all on one layer so you can you can obviously do what's going to be best for you. I just wanted to share those sets just in case you wanted to see what other options there were. And of course all these colors are available open stock. You may have trouble finding them. I believe Blick has them. They did at one point. If they don't now, uh, I don't know what I would recommend. You got to shop around though because they can get expensive. Um, their tubes were quite expensive. I don't know if they still are as bad as they used to be, but the sets are such a great deal that I can't recommend those enough. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some paintings with these. I'm going to see how they feel. Obviously I'm pretty familiar with the brand and I like their paints, but I'll do a painting, at least one painting with the set so I can share that with you when we come back and that's pretty much going to wrap it up. I feel like this video is going to be like two hours long, but I uh, hope you're enjoying it anyway. I was just cleaning up at the end of the day. Excuse the serenading upstairs if you can hear that and there my daughter's home and uh, she's playing her piano. Uh, so I just wanted to compare with a reg standard 48 watercolor set just so you can see like the size difference. It's actually not as different as I thought. It's maybe a smidgen longer but a little bit narrower. So yeah I was thinking that this was much smaller but it's really it's really not. But when you open it up this would be my Lucas set of 48. And this is the machine gold one. And I was thinking I needed the vellum in there to keep the swatch clean, but I don't think that's the case because um, these these little wings will keep it clean. And they're not touching the paint really, so that's the size of that opened up. That's the size of this opened up. So it's just a different configuration. I don't think it's really all that much smaller, maybe thinner. Maybe not, honestly. I just thought that was... I just wanted to mention that before I put everything away because I'm going to be painting with this, but I'm going to put all my other stuff away so I have some space. I'll fold it up. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's actually thicker. This is thicker. Not by much, but well, not that much different actually. One more thing before I put everything away. I mentioned keeping the swatch for this on the outside. I also have to keep the swatch for these core paints on the outside because they will stick. You just a little bit, just anything over there. They're very, they're very sticky paint. I just wanted to mention that because I know some people are really um, put off by that. Those of you that use M. Graham watercolors, you know how sticky those are. These are very similar to that. I don't think these have honey in them, but maybe they do. They're very sticky. Just wanted to put that out there. It doesn't bother me, but I can't store them on their side. Or honestly, I don't travel with paints that are really sticky like that. I, I keep it to. Well, that's not true. I do have a couple M grams on my portable, portable painter, but um, yeah, you just got to be careful of it. Let's wrap up this review of the Mission Gold 48 Triple Pan watercolor set. This is a painting I just finished, and this was a joy to paint with. They're fun. I love the granulation of the um, cobalt black there. The colors layered up really well. I did use a little bit of bleed proof white because I forgot to put the little... Um, label in there and I decided I wanted to beef up the white icing on there but a lot of fun a lot of fun to paint with um looking at the palette here I didn't clean it because I wanted to show you I didn't get a lot of beating up which was good I mean you can see some beating up here but it's pretty easy to mix up your color and you know see what you have that's a lot of water but let's see if I want to put you know, you can easily, easily see what you have. It doesn't beat up too quickly on you. And the more you use it, the more, um, the less it's going to beat up, you know. Now, let's clean this up and see if it stains at all. I'm going to give it a little spray of water. This is a plastic palette, so you don't have to worry about rust. You know, sometimes people don't want to spray their paints because they're in a metal palette and they're worried about rusting. That said, I really don't think you need to pre-activate these. Uh, Mission Gold paints do tend to be sticky. They will pull moisture from the air. I don't know if they have honey in them or if it's just whatever glycerin or whatever or the hermectin they're using, but you generally don't need to pre-wet them. Of course you can if, if that's your preference or if you live someplace really dry, but um, 
I am working in a small office with the with a radiator on, so it's pretty dry in here, and I didn't have any rewetting issues. I would might even caution about spraying it because I just wonder if maybe water would seep like in between and maybe puddle up there and then cause. I don't think it would cause mold, but it might cause your paints to be a little bit extra sticky and mushy. So we do have some staining on the plastic here. I think you'd probably remedy that with Magic Eraser, but it's just going to stain again when you use it. It doesn't even really show on camera, but there is a little bit of staining there. I think this is marvelous, really. Um, now we'll do pros and cons. Pros, price really for 48 half pans of color for $100, that's not bad, especially where it comes with the palette and it's just such a unique, innovative design. The quality of the paints, the quality is good. They're all light, fast colors. They're four and five star and nothing in there gave me any pause. Um, even the Napthal Crimson PR112 that was in one of the mixes, that is that is um, still rated as light, fast color. So uh, yeah, I didn't see anything here that would give me pause as far as light fastness. So that's good. My only con for this set, honestly, would be the, I'm just going to close this up here. I like how this goes in there and protects my swatch from sticking to the paint because like I said, my other swatches, my other Mission Gold sets, I have to keep the swatch on the outside of the container but this is going to prevent anything from sticking. So I really like that. And I like how it was packaged with glassine so that um, uh, it was, isn't going to stick to anything in transit. But the thing, the only con would be, in my opinion, and this might not be a con for you, but the only con in my opinion would be the, the convenience colors when it would be very easy just to mix those colors from the other, from the colors in the set. If this was like a 48 set pure pigment color, pure pigment set, now that would be like perfect. I would buy, I would buy it again. If they came out with 48 pure pigment in this, I would probably just buy it again because I love their paints that much and I love their pig, pure pigment colors. They have that in a, in a tube thing, which would probably be much more smart to, pick that up but um, yeah that's just so handy and the paints wear so slowly that are you going to go through a 15 ml tube you know that's the, the size they come in in those larger in those larger kits but yeah um, yeah my only con would be you've got these greens are all very similar these these four here that would be so easy just to mix and um, I like these convenience greens but again you could mix them with what you have but I like to have some earthy convenience greens just for convenience um, but honestly that's my only con. The only con is the is the multiple pigment mixes that would be easy to make yourself. So I think you have a pretty good amount of information on whether this set is for you. These are very transparent. The white does not show up at all. Um, but it, and it's very transparent. It's just a mixing white. It's just a Chinese white. The other colors are all extremely translucent, extremely vibrant. If you don't like really vibrant colors, this is not the set for you. Go get Winsor Newton. Go get Da Vinci, go get Sennelier, get something a little more traditional feeling. But if you want those super vibrant in your face colors that are like impossible to make mud with, this is a set for you. So I like it. I'm glad I purchased it, even though I didn't need it. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully it will help others either buy it or not buy it, whatever, whatever is right for them. I have a ball with these paints. I really need to use them more often because they're so much fun. So there you have it. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my reviews. I apologize for the water pump, but I'm just going to go with it because we're almost done. Thank you. That's it. That's all. That's all, folks. <laughs> I have nothing more to say about this, and I've talked long enough. So thanks for watching, and until next time, happy crafting.